the first book of Samuel chapter 15 speaks about Saul going out to war against the Amalekites. And the word tells us very clearly, God tells Saul, when you go and you conquer that nation, don't leave anything behind. Even if it's good or it's bad, don't leave anything behind, destroy everything. And the word tells us, Saul and his people failed to do that. They failed to do that. They go right ahead. They destroy everything that is bad. But there are certain things that are very helpful to them. Anything that makes them rich, they start keeping it to themselves. And the word tells us, Saul and the people spared Agag, this is in verse 9, and the best of the sheep and the cattle and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was valuable and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. Certain things they kept aside when God told them, don't do it. And the word tells us, later Samuel comes to Saul and he says, why have you done this? Why have you made yourself so unworthy? And this is Saul's excuse. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. I feared the people and I obeyed their voice. Dear brothers and sisters, there are so many ministers in the Bible we see who end up making this mistake. They fear the people. Basically, what is the meaning of this fear of the people? You're, you're scared about your position. You're scared about your position. But one thing we have to realize, being called as ministers of the Lord, we've got to realize, if at all we have any position, it has been given to us by God. If at all we have any position, it has been given to us by God. And therefore, we don't bask in the glory of what is not ours. We don't try to hold on to things that are not ours. God has given it to us for his glory. God has raised us up for the truth to be spoken from our mouths. His truth. We don't bend rules just to satisfy the world. We don't bend rules just to satisfy the world. And that is one reason why I really love many of our popes who stood staunchly to the truth. Staunchly to the truth. And they wouldn't bend their, bend their ideas in spite of people speaking against it. In spite of a majority speaking against it. One, I love the fact that they stand up against abortion so strongly. Though the world keeps having their own ideas and the, and the way the world looks at abortion, the church still holds on so strongly. Even to the extent when we had the Vatican Council too. And after that, there was the great discussion about contraception and how the church still stands so strongly about their views. Dear brothers and sisters, that's important for a minister of God. A minister of God cannot keep moving around according to situations. Dear brothers and sisters, that kind of a ministry is not accepted by the Lord. If we are the ministers of the Lord, we speak what God wants us to speak. The Lord leads us on and he tells us what is right and what is wrong. In the Bible, very clearly, in John chapter 6, the word tells us when Jesus was speaking about his bread, about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Till that time, the word says in John 6, verse 1 onwards, it speaks about Jesus changing the bread into the, the five loaves of bread and giving it to the 5,000. That was a miracle that took place. Multiplication of the loaves, multiplication of the fish. People were very happy. The word tells us in John chapter 6, in John chapter 6, the word tells us everyone was very happy with it. To the extent that they termed him a prophet. This is in John 6 verse 14. John 6 verse 14. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
When the people saw the sign, they were so happy that they said that this is indeed the prophet. This is the one who is supposed to come into the world. And they were very happy with Jesus. Why? Because they got that bread. Because they got that bread. That's the only reason they were happy with Jesus. The word tells us the next day, Jesus goes across the, the river. He wants to have his own time of prayer. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of strong wind blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. That means they've crossed the, the river, the lake. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why did they go looking for Jesus? Bread is over. Bread is over. That's why they went looking for Jesus. If anyone is giving free supply of bread, who doesn't want it? You know, anything we get free, everyone wants it. It's only when you start putting in an amount for that, that is when people don't like it. And when Jesus was giving good, fresh bread, they were all very happy. They went in search of him and they found him. And the word tells us how they look at the Lord and they speak. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? So much of love. Rabbi, when did you come here? And the Lord looks at them and says, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill. You've come to me because you've eaten your fill. And then Jesus starts going into depth and he tells, bread you're looking for, eat of my flesh. And you want to drink, I will shed my blood and you will drink of my blood. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. And that is when now suddenly things are getting complicated. And people so don't understand. If it was just about eating that bread, it was okay. Now why does he have to go into things like this? Eating flesh, drinking blood like cannibals. We are not cannibals. We don't like all this. This talk is not good for us. We don't want to hear something so violent. It doesn't look so nice. It doesn't taste so nice. He's not multiplying any loaves over here. He doesn't seem to be giving us any bread. He's talking about bread from heaven. He's talking about his flesh. He's talking about his blood. We don't want to hear all this. And they look at the Lord and they say, we are going. You're not giving us bread, we are going. You give us bread, we'll stay on. Dear brothers and sisters, at that moment, the Lord didn't look and say, well, you didn't like what I said? I'm so sorry, I changed my statements. He never changed his statements. He never changed his statements to suit the people around him. He spoke the truth and only the truth. And he wouldn't move from that. Dear brothers and sisters, his attitude was, you want to accept, you accept. But this is the truth. And this is what I'm called to tell you. And this is what each minister of God is called to tell the world. Tell the world about what God thinks is right and wrong. Not what the world thinks is right and wrong. Today, sometimes I feel very sad when many of us in our ministry, we are moving and making way for people to accept us. Words that come out of our mouth are just to console people so that they accept us. Literally, I've heard of people who look and they've been 
contradicting their same statements from one year to the other. The only reason, because the situation is like that. To an extent, when I went outside, a person told me, but father, you have to be very careful over here because here this thing is not a sin. Well, that's very amusing because sin is sin everywhere. That's, that's very amusing. Sin is sin everywhere. On the day when the Lord will have his judgments, he will not have books of judgments according to the countries we go to. He will look and say, well, in this country, in, in the US, well, the sin of homosexuality, it's not a sin. It's okay, so it's fine. While in India, that is considered a sin. Dear brothers and sisters, sin is sin everywhere. Accept it or no. Accept it or no. And the fact is, when we speak out for the Lord and we speak out with conviction about Jesus, be assured the world will not accept you. The world will not accept you. And ultimately the choice is yours. Do you want the world or do you want Jesus? That is why he says so clearly in John chapter 15, he says, If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me first. And that is why the Lord says, if you want to be a part of me, you will have to take up your cross. Whoever said ministry is about comfort? Whoever said ministry is about acceptance? You know, sometimes I think being here in this retreat center is quite easy for us. We are protected. You all sit there. I stand here. I proclaim. You'll have to keep quiet because all my volunteers are around. It's safe. But dear brothers and sisters, there are certain areas where you go in. You're going to find it tough. You're going to find it tough to speak about Jesus. You're going to find it tough to speak about the truth. You're going to find a set of people who just don't think like you. It's easy here to sit here. If I ask how many of you believe that abortion is wrong? Yes, that's exactly the answer. You'll say all. And that's why it's safe over here. But go outside and sit amongst a set of people who want to do it because they say it's, it's women's rights. I have a right to kill my child. It's my right as a woman. It's, it's my right to kill a child. You sit, um, sit amongst a set of people who do that and then you speak about Jesus. You'll not get acceptance there. You'll get rejection. You'll be scoffed at. Dear brothers and sisters, but that is the attitude that is there outside. Let's not sit in this very protective world of ours and think that it's very easy to speak about Jesus. There's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when even in our country, there will be people amongst our own people. Now itself, in many of the metropolitan cities, you go in, you speak certain things about sin. They will not accept you. And it's at those moments that you are supposed to stand staunchly with the Lord and speak for Jesus. Don't start moving around your mindset according to what people want you to say. We have not been called by the people. We have been called by Jesus. And if at all we have any kind of a responsibility, it is a responsibility to Jesus and for no one else. Have that desire in your heart never to be a people pleaser. Never to be a people pleaser. Don't do anything in life to, ple to please people. Even when you are seated with people around you. Sometimes you won't get accepted when you stand up for the Lord. Sometimes you will get rejected when you stand up for the truth. Be ready to do that. When there are a set of people speaking filth, this is just an example. Set of people speaking filth. Don't sit around with them and think, well, if I don't smile to their jokes, I will not be accepted. If I don't smile to their jokes, I will not be accepted. Because the moment you do that, you're becoming a person who is a people pleaser. You're smiling to what the people want you to smile at. Never be a people pleaser as a minister of the Lord. The moment you become a people pleaser, you're not worthy of doing ministry for Jesus. You're not worthy to do ministry for Jesus. Today I'm even so saddened when I see people even talk about Jesus in terms of being one of the saviors. 
one of the saviors. And there are people around saying, well, from anywhere, let the blessings come. It's okay. It's okay. It's sad because we should have a conviction in our heart for us to be able to give out something to the others. He's not one of the saviors. He's the only savior. And if we are not able to believe that, we are not worthy to do the ministry. The word tells us very clearly after that, after Aaron's mistake, true, God forgives him. God still continues to bless him. But the fact remains, Aaron lost his glory. Aaron lost his glory. After that, we see Aaron making mistakes time and again. Ultimately, it reaches a stage where Aaron is stripped of all his glory. Let us not reach a stage where we are stripped of all our glory. When we are stripped of all our glory. At present, as a minister of the Lord, the Lord has given you glory. He's given you graces. There is an anointing on every touch of yours. There is an anointing in every word that comes from your mouth. There is a grace that emits from your faces. But the moment you stop speaking for the Lord and you start speaking for yourself, you start speaking to safeguard your position, be assured that glory will be stripped and it will never again be reflected on your faces. The minister of God speaks for God and God alone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If nothing else, let us remember one thing. How the ministry of the disciples were. The disciples were always whipped and lashed and they were told never to speak about Jesus. What would they do? immediately they will go out and speak about Jesus. Immediately. They don't even wait. This is found very clearly in Acts chapter 5 verse 40. And when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple... And at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus the Messiah. Praise the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, that is the one reason why 12 disciples, 12 disciples who were supposed to be uneducated, were able to change the world. For only one reason, they were faithful to their ministry. They were faithful to their ministry. That is the only reason why God was able to let Christianity spread all over. Because they were faithful to their ministry. Praise the Lord. You want power in your ministry? Be faithful to God. You might not be accepted by others. Don't care about your positions. Your position has been given to you by God. That is why when Pilate looked at Jesus and Pilate said, I have the authority to set you free. What did the Lord tell him? Your authority has come from above. You have no authority over me. Your authority is given by God. Dear brothers and sisters, if we have any position today, it's given by God. If he wants to take it away just because we spoke the truth about him, then so be it. It's his. It's his. Then so be it. We have nothing to lay claims to it. If he wants to give it, let him give it. If he wants to take it back, let him take it back. It's his. Don't hold on to the positions just pleasing the world. Hold on to Jesus and please God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us close our eyes for a moment. As a Christian, we are called to the ministry. It's a call that Jesus gave to every disciple. Go into all the world and proclaim about me. About me, about my values, about my teachings. How have I proclaimed about Jesus? Have I been able to stand up and speak the truth? Even if that means I would be sidelined. Even if that means I would be hated. Even if that means I would be unworthy. Lord, so many times in the past, 
have made this mistake of being a people pleaser. I failed to say things that were wrong and I failed to point it out as well. I failed because I wanted the acceptance of people around me. Lord, I ended up giving my heart more to the people than to you. I forgot that it was you who called me, not them. Today in your presence, I ask you to give me the grace to be your mouthpiece. Never to do things according to what the world wants me to do it. But to do things according to how you want me to do it. Lord, let me, let me remain faithful. Always faithful to your call and to your ministry. In the course of this faithfulness, I might get rejected. I might feel unwanted. But every time that happens, let me remember that you too were rejected. You too were unwanted. But you spoke nothing but the truth. You are the truth. Lord, let me speak nothing but the truth. Amen.